Stefan here. Uh, I know it's been a while bringing you guys another video. Today we're going to be do it, taking a review over the Mazda CX-5. Uh, this is the Grand Touring model. This is actually my sister's brand new car before she goes off to start her uh, sophomore year in college. Parents decided her to get her car. I'm kind of jealous, not gonna lie. Just take a little quick walk around of the car. It's brand new to 2018 car. It has the Sky Active uh, two and a half liter engine. Let's see. Let's open the hood here. These things, I'm not gonna lie, actually look pretty good. Bear with me here. I have to try to open the hood. All right, there we are. Surprisingly, this thing does not come with hydraulics. I don't know why. 2018 but here is the engine bay like I said two and a half liters it's pumping out I believe around 187 horsepower and 185 torque uh, which is not bad uh, for you know crossover this size uh, it's the first time I've ever done anything with a Mazda or driven a Mazda so this will be pretty new to me um, but yeah, as you can see you know clean engine bay Alright, and let's go ahead and take a trip inside. This car does come with keyless entry. So here's a key fob. Nice little key fob. These are all feel metal. So you, um, it's not, it was unlocked. It is not like, you know, most common um, ones where you put your hand behind and it has a little sensor where it will detect your hand and the key in your pocket to where it will open. You actually have to push the button to unlock it then you're allowed to get inside. So, just taking a look at the interior. Uh, it does come uh, wrapped with leather, nice stitching. It does have your automatic power seats. It's wrapped in full, nice leather. It kind of has like a little bit of, I want to say Alcantara type of feel to it. Um, it does come with Bose surround sound systems. I don't know how many speakers this car has, but let me go ahead and get inside and start the engine because it is hot and humid here in Texas. Go ahead and turn that off. We'll get into that. So, just looking at the paper that it came with, show you a little, tell you a little bit about the car. So it's two and a half liter, uh, 187 horsepower, actually 186 torque. Um, it does have, I believe, it has sport mode. I don't, this is a front wheel drive model. This isn't the all wheel drive model. It does have the lane departure warning. Uh, fully automated windows, as you can see here. And it'll also pop up in your dashboard too. Fully auto down and fully auto up. Coming back to here, does seat five people, has full LEDs. Um, does have automatic climate both dual zone and it does this one comes with the heated seats since this is a grand touring model it doesn't come with the heated steering wheel um, it also does have hill launch assist it has a sport mode um, and you can also put it into manual mode everything in this car feels pretty good the seats feel pretty they keep you in place I want to say they're nice and fully bol bolstered as you can tell from me um, soft padding here on the dashboard the infotainment system sadly Mazda still has not um, integrated uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay into their systems but this uh, is a touchscreen model which is I find that to be pretty nice whenever I started to play with it it does come with the sunroof let's go ahead and put this away Oh, and for the fuel efficiency, it is rated at 25 in the city, 31 in the highway, so an average of about 28 miles. And this car totally optioned out was around $28,000 and some change. It does have the optional Bose Audio 10 speaker system and the Mazda navigation and the moonroof. 
So I can tell you right now the Bose system sounds pretty good. Like I said, nice leather stitch here. Got this kind of aluminum uh, trim to it. AC blows nice and cool. Let's go ahead and take a look in the back seat to see how much space we have here. As we have not, I didn't unlock the car. So hopping in the back seat, and I'm about to drive this car, so I have plenty of leg room. You have your AC controls back here as well. Cup holders. Unfortunately, it is not auto down um, on the rear passenger and nor is it auto up. So that is one function that they didn't integrate into the back seat. But as you can see, it does carry back the Alcantara to the back seats as well. You have your little cup holders here. As you pop this open, you have your place where you can plug in your port for your phone, your UBS port. So I think that's nice that they integrated that versus I see a lot of cars that integrated it into the uh, center column here. Uh, nice leather. So as you can see, I'm about, I want to say about 5'10", 5'11", on a good day. And I have a really good, decent amount of leg room. You could definitely, you know, this is a crossover. You could definitely, you know, take this on a long trip and I'd be perfectly fine. Um, let's go ahead and hop out of the back seat. If you're hearing that beeping, it's because they recently put an alarm system on this car. Let's go ahead and open up the trunk. I think it's that button right here. Yep. So it does have an automated trunk. And let's see. It does come with a spare tire. This has a Bose. That actually, I wonder what, I wonder if that's the subwoofer or something. That'd be, that'd be nice. But yeah, it does come with a spare tire. This is a place where you can, if you needed more space. Um, yeah, full uh, functional rear tire. Um, these seats, I believe, do fold down if you're looking, you know, if you're looking to hold more space, more luggage into here. But, you know, it gives you a nice, good size for, you know, long hauling and carrying stuff around. And, uh, release the trunk, fully automated trunk. Let's go ahead and hop back inside. So let's go ahead and mess with the infotainment system here. Um, let's see. This is the... Let me go ahead and hold on. So like I said, this is a touchscreen infotainment system. Um, and it does have the... It is optioned out with the 10 speaker Bose audio system. So these are going to be your little controls here. You have for your music, your home screen, and your navigation. So if you go back to the home screen, you know, it's going to come with, you know, integrations for your phone. Um, if you want to make a phone call, actually, let me go back here. It said that it had a text message feature. I don't know. Maybe if that's, maybe if you're connected to Bluetooth, I have mine connected uh, through the center console to the UBS port. Since it is my sister's car, I don't really want to mess with the Bluetooth, but it does come with a pretty good size, a uh, decent amount of space for, you know, a center console. Um, so that's also that's a nice feature that they added in. Um, this is a leather wrapped center console. It doesn't move back or forward, so it does stay right here. It comes with two cup holders up here up front. It does come with a little place if you wanted to put your phone, as well as a little port right here. Um, like I said, it does come with dual zone automated climate control, as well as uh, heated uh, front seats. Steering wheel is nice, fully leather wrapped. Feels really good in place of your hands. Horn sounds good. Got a message here. And it, like I said, it does come with a moonroof as optioned out. This car is kind of dirty. It just got done raining. Uh, you know, it's been raining for about a good three days here. Back to the infotainment system. It does come with the navigation. Let me pop that up. Navigation. Let me see here. That's your 2D view. This is your 3D view. I'm not for sure how well um, the Mazda's navigation system is, but I would hope that you know it'd be somewhat, uh, it'd be good. It does, it does come with HD radio, and it, it does tell you you know coming, taking tollways, and you know so I'm sure that 
you can choose your options if you want to take toll if you not want to, if you don't want to take toll things like that um, let's hop out of this back to the home screen slide over here let me see what we have in applications yeah so it has your fuel economy your HD radio so right here uh, this is going to be your HD um, or you're going to be your fuel economy this is your tachometer let's go back here to the infotainment so let me actually play a decent song here so I can show you just how well the surround system sounds here I'm going to play Travis Scott's new album Copyrights here, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. Um, but yeah, it comes with two speakers up here, two speakers down here, and then I'm pretty sure when I went to show you the rear trunk, that was the um, uh, subwoofer in the back, and then it comes with two on the on the rear side back seat column. Aside from that, let's go ahead and take this car out for a spin. I actually have somewhere I need to go. Oh, also one thing to note, it does come with a rear view uh, camera. I just now noticed that because it just popped up here on the dash screen. Um, I'll I'll take the camera. I have it mounted on the center column right now, so I'll take that off and show y'all exactly what that looks like. It doesn't t it doesn't turn until uh, whenever you turn the wheel. I can tell you that right now. Just turn it in drive here. Actually, hang on real quick. I forgot to turn or close my trunk real quick. All right, sorry about that. So if we get going here, like I did mention before, you can put it in manual mode and it does come with sport mode. So we'll go ahead and whenever I get here out on the main road, see what that feels like and see how responsive and um, what sport mode actually really does in terms of how the car feels if it'll tighten up the response of the car and how the engine handles I'll tell you right now it is responsive good visibility I can tell you that steering steering wheel feels good in your hands stoplight right now so we'll see how it is from the get-go I know this uh, car driver said the 060 for this car is about around 8.1 seconds um, you know I, I want to test that theory to see because it, it's not fast I'll tell you that right now but um, when you put it in sport mode it does feel a little bit uh, thro uh, throaty as in terms of whenever you're putting your foot down so let's see Red line, it does red line at 6,000 RPM. Yeah, it gets up and it gets up and goes. That was that was about 60 that I just hit. Totally speeding, but I'd bump it back into regular mode. So this is a six-speed auto. Right now it's saying on a 
full tank of gas, I should average, it's saying around, on a full tank of gas, 516 miles. So I do like the digital informant in the, on the right hand side of my dash here. It's telling me uh, the engine temps, my fuel economy, uh, and it also tells me uh, in terms of GPS which way I'm going. So right now I'm heading southwest. And I'm sure, I'd hope that if you were going to use the navigation in here that it would actually pop up in this side of the screen so that you wouldn't have to look over, you know, to keep your eyes focused and just look down rather than looking to the side to see where you're going. Let's go ahead and let me see. Okay, there's the torque. Yeah, that's not bad. As soon as you put your foot down, it's like an instant response. There is no delay since, like I said, this is a two and a half, two and a half liter four cylinder. There is no turbo or anything, so it is pretty responsive. And that was just in regular drive mode. So now I'm about to have a little bit more room to actually play with the car and see how she feels. I can tell you right now, in terms of road noise, there is none. Um, I know the car and driver said they measured it and this was like one decibel quieter than the Mercedes GLC, I believe. And you can definitely tell I don't I don't hear any road noise at all. Aside from the engine. Alright, so I'm gonna drop it down into sport mode. And immediately it starts to hold the RPM. It shoots up to about two, uh, two and a half for the RPM. Oh yeah, that's that's a nice response. Okay, so actually putting my foot down the red line that time, it it went past six. So yeah, this car actually, you know, for a crossover, this actually gets up and goes. I was almost 80. I was doing about 45 below, 45 before. So yeah, as I'm driving it right now, it's still holding, still it holds the gear. Right now it's about 3,000 RPM. Punch it again. So you definitely can feel the torque. Definitely can feel the torque. drop it down into regular mode and like I said you do have to it takes a little pushing down on the brake pedal before the brake actually um, bites down and grips the car and brings it to a stop this would be a very nice easygoing daily car you know you have your music playing your navigation AC works perfectly fine. Visibility is really good. I can see out of my rear view spots perfectly fine. Um, let me see the navig. The uh, okay, there we go. I just turned on my lane departure warning. I was like, I was wondering why that's not that hasn't been beeping at me or anything. Not that I'm not staying in my lane, but just to see how that that works. So yeah, very nice, easygoing car. Very quiet. Doesn't make any noise. Very comfortable, very soft, uh, soft ride. Not hard, not harsh at all. I do like the response of this engine, though. It is very nice. You can actually feel the. T okay, there it is. There it is. And that, that's lane departure warning beeping at me. Yeah, when that happens, it'll pop up here on the right-hand side of the screen, and it'll kind of alert you, telling you that, hey, there's a car on your right side that you're, that you, it's a little bit too close, too close to comfort for you. It truly really is a nice car, guys. Um, if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're ever in the market looking for a decent, nice, luxury um, crossover that's not expensive, that has premium feel and uh you know a premium comfort to it 
I think you should definitely give Mazda a try. The CX-5 is a really nice car. And it does deliver for the performance of it. It does deliver. It does, it does not come up shy in that aspect. The handling is it's good. It's good for a crossover. It's not bad. It's nothing sporty like, but I will say whenever you do put it in sport mode, you do feel the um, the uh, tightness, the firmness of the steering wheel tighten up as you put it into sport mode. Please don't hit me. The torque does feel good for 186 pound-feet of torque. I think you can feel all 186 pound-feet of torque coming from this motor. It does feel pretty good whenever you feel, you feel actually feel the torque come, uh, kick in. Moonroof, it's kind of hot right now, so I don't really want that open, but it is fully functional. As you can see, hopefully, maybe, you can see the brightness. rides very smooth it's really quiet in here aside from the minimal road noise depending on how smooth the road that you're driving around is on um, very smooth comfort ride I really don't have any complaints about this car it really does feel you know really nice for you know something of this value and size brakes when they do engage it does bring it does feel firm Far, I'm not. I'm, I mean, I'm not driving the car hard, but I don't witness any brake fade at all. all right. So let me go ahead and uh, unmount this real quick. So that's the rear view camera that it was that it shows. As you see, as I turn the wheel, it doesn't tilt. And it doesn't turn. So that's one thing that I feel that. You know, for a 2018 car that it should implement, um, but sadly, apparently it doesn't. So there isn't really much more for me to say about this car. Um, it kind of speaks for itself. Definitely, if you're in the market and you're looking at maybe getting a CX-5, I definitely go out and test drive one at your local Mazda dealership. Let's see if we can get on it here. This is regular drive mode. So it does pull, it, take, it takes a little while. Like I said, this is no, by means, not a fast car at all, but it will pull and uh, give what you ask of it. That was about 40 to 60. That took quite a while for it to get there, but you know, it, it, it feels good in terms of, you know, it only delivers 187 ho uh, horsepower. You know, you can actually feel it and it feels good. It's not, it's not a slouch in any way. Yeah, this car only comes with two modes. You have your regular drive comfort mode, and then you have your sport mode. Actually, see here, if we put it into manual mode, see how that goes. Manual on sport mode. Let's see how responsive it is. shifting it in manual mode it is responsive um, it doesn't delay in any way whenever you're shifting let's see I wonder if it auto downshifts for you not auto downshifts but up shifts no so we're gonna do a 40 pull right now and just see we're gonna go into second gear Very throaty, very responsive, not a 
a fast car at all, but it delivers, you know, for not an expensive price at all. And as you get on the brakes, brakes do their job and bring the you. She just said I'm bad, I hit the fizzle dance, man. Either hand is the upper hand. Got a bubble on my other hand. So, as you can see, surround sound for the audio system in this car sounds really good. That is going to about do it for this video, guys. Um, like I said, if you guys are looking for a cheap, affordable crossover that gives you premium comfort, quality, feels, um, definitely look into the Mazda CX-5. There are plenty of other cars out there in the spectrum that this car competes with. Um, but, you know, you're not you're going to be spending a lot more money uh, for the same things that you can get in those cars versus in this car. Um, with all of that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys found this video informative, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, look forward to the future. Um, one big thing, I did partner up with a dealer, Chevy dealership, so I will br be able to bring you guys more videos hopefully soon um, before my school semester starts and then hopefully throughout the school semester. Um, the thing about that, I won't be able to drive the cars just yet. I have to, you know, this is a process. You have to earn their trust first. So um, they started me out with gonna, gonna be letting me uh, review cars in the showroom. So I'll be able to, you know, tell you about, you know, what the car offers, what features it may offer, what it doesn't offer on a specific model. And we'll go from there. Hopefully, you know, when once I gain and earn their trust, you know, they'll let me take cars out, drive them so I can give you from a perspective what it's like to actually drive the car versus just telling you how it may feel or handle, you know, versus if it's a Camaro or a Chevy uh, truck or a Suburban or Tahoe. You know, so hopefully look forward to that in the near future. Um, I should hopefully have this video uploaded. I should have it uploaded by tomorrow sometime, and then hopefully I'll be able to get into the Chevy dealership here within the next couple of days or maybe even the weekend and get a video in and then have them edited and just upload it. So I'll be looking forward to tomorrow and hopefully sometime next week. Aside from that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Again, please like, share, subscribe if you found this informative. Let me know what your thoughts are on the CX-5. Please comment down below. Let me know. Share your thoughts and opinions of this car. What you, what you liked, what you disliked. Um, aside from that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.